Well, hey, my name is Ryan Earnhardt from creativesoundlab.tv, where audio recording is an art form. So today's episode is really about preamp gain staging. And uh, we talked a couple weeks ago about guitar amp gain staging, and this is just a kind of a continuation, but on the lesser scale, of how to gain stage and how to color um, different tracks with preamps. And this is actually inspired uh, by my viewers. Um, I've had a couple of you write in, say, you know, hey, when should I use this? When, I, when should I use that? And really how to do it. So I want to walk you through kind of how I do it with preamp gain staging, writing the gain hot, writing it down low to, for a kind of a cleaner, um, you know, punchy sound. So here's what we're going to be learning today about preamps. So I'd mentioned a few weeks ago that um, setting up a guitar amp, um, there's a lot of um, crossover skills between setting up that guitar amp and setting other gain stages around the studio. And preamps is really no exception to that. Um, in fact, I'll use the exact same graph that I did for the guitar amp. So we have the gain, uh, we have the tone. So the more tone we get, we go over here, the more gain we go up. And usually what happens is, is as we go up in our um, gain with our preamp, we actually do get more flavor. The preamp's working harder. It's going to color more and more as we go up, making it a diagonal line up like that. So, you know, obviously we have kind of a cleaner area of the preamp, maybe the bottom 30% or so. And this is kind of the, the clean zone, right? But then as we add more, we start to really get some cool flavors going with the preamp, okay? This is kind of the flavor zone. And then there's a certain point where there's, um, there's you know, noticeable compression happening um, right before the distortion. So here's kind of compression happening. This is really, you know, really where we kind of aim for, at least I do, uh, especially in like guitar tones and things like that, kick drum, snare drum this is where really where i aim for okay maybe this is like 50 60 percent on the preamp um, and then at, at a certain point it just it just it just goes nuts and it's not really as usable uh, so this this zone here i'm going to call it the crush zone okay um, and so this zone here is really where if you're on snare drum all of a sudden you lose the transient you lose the punch on the snare drum. This could be, let's say, 70% to 100%, okay? This is the crush zone. Um, this is also the zone where you have um, noticeable overtones coming from the preamp itself, and not necessarily desirable unless you want that. Um, who am I to tell you that you shouldn't get that? So, um, so yeah, this is really the crush zone. And if you notice, it's really um, kind of a, a shrunk version of the guitar amp. The guitar amp started with the compression zone somewhere in the middle, whereas this, the compression zone is a lot higher. And so the range of the preamp is more oriented to, um, to not overdrive, um, whereas the preamp itself, um, you overdrive basically at the very extremes. On the guitar, um, I was calling it like uh, literally like it's it's imploding um, at, at you know around 90 or so. Uh, where is this? It's really in kind of the crush zone where it's it's chopping off the transients of the snare and the kick, and it's really um, doing some interesting things for our guitar sound. Now all these tones, you know, they're very subtle uh, when you're just hearing them on a single instrument, but over time they really add up. Uh, you know, 10 drum tracks, 10 guitar parts, you know, vocals. Really, you, you push enough gain on the preamps, it really starts to lose a lot of punch and get pretty hot sounding. So, I mean, be careful when you do this. You wanna make sure to go to where you think sounds cool, maybe dial it back a smidge, um, but just make sure you're not doing it too hard. Uh, one thing that I noticed on kick and snares is if you zoom out in your DAW, you can see that um, it's a very level, um, you know, the transients are all very level. It looks like a perfect square. That means that it's really maxed out. You might want to back it out a touch because you're not going to get any punch out of your snare. You might not get any punch out of your kick. Um, so that's usually my sign if I'm running it too hot. But, you know, driving hot preamps, it's a lot of fun. You get a lot of cool flavors that you wouldn't get, um, you know, just turning up the gain until you need some. But this way, you're turning up more than you need, 
and you're attenuating that back so you don't clip your digital input. So I'll see you next week.